My name is Moxie. I'm a new robot. Great news! The Moxie robot, produced by Paula Pergenia's Embodied Company, received the main prize in the AI category at the CES 2024 International Exhibition. We have a chance to talk to Paula Pergenian about the robot and their latest achievement. Hello, Mr. Pergenian, and thank you for accepting our invitation. So, my first question is, what is Moxie AI and what inspired you to create it? I know that there is a story behind it. Uh, yes, so Moxie AI is a, a companion AI robot that is to help children with uh, child development. So on one hand, uh, to date, it has been focused on uh, social, emotional skills development, which is teaching children about how to manage their emotions, teach them good social skills, communication skills, positive thinking, emotional regulation, and so on. And now we are actually advancing it to also include academic development. So everything from math and science to history and geography and arts and politics and so on. So anything the child wants to learn with a Mox AI tutoring functionality, they can actually learn about this. And it's designed so that it can actually help the child explore their interest areas and motivate them so that they actually develop a passion for learning and love for learning. It's not so much like a classroom where you have to go through a certain curriculum, but it's more about uh, inspiring the child to motivate them to learn, to want to learn, right? So uh, that's what Moxie AI is. Uh, the inspiration from it probably comes from many different things, including my own childhood. I was a refugee early in my childhood, separated from my parents. And I always dreamt of having a robot like this that could help me. Do you have one in your home now? I have one in my home, yes. Great. So what makes Moxie special? For example, in Armenia, we have Robin the robot, which has been used in hospitals. What is something that makes Moxie unique? Um, there is a number of things. Number one is that it's using the cutting edge technology, so it's fully autonomous. Uh, it has a design that's very adorable for children. So it uses a lot of uh, design principles from Disney and Pixar to make the character come alive and be very empathetic. Um, and then thirdly, which is very important, it's affordable for everyone to be able to buy it. It's, it's cheaper than the iPhone. Usually these robots end up costing $10,000 or more. Uh, which is then makes it very hard to be affordable for everyone. But with Moxie, our goal was to make it affordable enough that anyone can afford to buy it. And then what happened? He said he didn't want to play with me anymore. Thank you for telling me about your day. Sometimes holding a friend's hand makes me feel better. Do you want to try squeezing my hand? Moxie has been in the market for three years now, if I'm not mistaken. So could you share how many children use Moxie and what results you have observed during this time? So we are a private company. We don't share the numbers publicly, but we are talking about, we are primarily focused in the U.S. And there is a, a many, many thousands of children that are using Moxie. Uh, and we have a lot of really interesting results. We did a clinical study a couple of years ago where we showed that children after about one month of work working with Moxie, they will 71% of them will see improved uh, social skills, emotional regulation skills, and so on. What we hear from parents all the time where sometimes it's life-changing uh, situation for families. As example, some children, especially after COVID, suffer from anxiety and social anxiety and these children usually will come up with 10 excuses for why they shouldn't go to school that day mm -hmm. it's because they have an anxiety and uh, after working with moxie for a couple of months these children develop the skills to be able to be confident enough to stand in front of a whole classroom and give a presentation as an example uh, we even have uh, extreme examples uh where actually some adults use Moxie too. Uh, these are usually people that have no friends or they have medical conditions that doesn't allow them to go outside. So they are socially isolated. 
and uh, we have had people that uh, were completely cut off from society and to the point where they didn't have any will to live anymore. But after getting moxie, they have uh, gotten a lot more positive in their mindset and uh, have a much better quality of life. Those numbers are really impressive. And how many languages can Moxie speak? Currently only English. English only, yeah. Uh, but we are working on making it uh, multilingual. Uh, and we will see if we can also include Armenian in there. Yeah, we'll wait for it. <laughs> yeah. One of the challenges, as I'm sure you know, uh, since Armenia is such a small population, most of the systems out there, like Google systems and so on, or translators and so on, unfortunately don't include Armenian typically. Uh, so, but definitely we'll do Russian. And mm -hmm. if we can, we can also do Armenian. Right. So talking about Armenia, I saw that the news about Moxie was shared also by the Ministry of High Tech Industry of Armenia. I wanted to know if there is an option to cooperate with Armenia in some way, like with Armenian scientific groups or the government itself. Yeah, we already do, uh, first of all. So we have a team of about 15 Armenian scientists in Yerevan that uh, are part of our team and are helping have been helping us for the last six years developing the technology in MOXIE. So we are very proud about that. It's an amazing team. And uh, the acknowledgement we received from the high tech Ministry of High Tech Industry in Armenia is uh, we are very proud about that. And we are... Uh, we are talking with the Armenian government for tighter collaboration. As a matter of fact, uh, I will be in Yerevan on February 2nd. There's a conference uh, organized by the Ministry of High Tech Industry where I will be giving a keynote speech about Moxie. Your child can wake up Moxie by saying, hello, Moxie. When we talk about AI technologies, privacy is something important. How does Moxie AI ensure children's data is protected and used responsibly? Yes, uh, security and privacy is very important to us as well. From the very beginning, we have been very careful about making sure that uh, we have all the security measures in there. So every data, all data is encrypted with a unique encryption key that only the parent has. Any data that we collect that we use for retraining our AI models is stripped off any personally identifiable information. So name of the child location and all these things is stripped off any transcript of conversations. Um, and so, and then also the data that we collect is dissociated from what robot it comes from. So there is no way to, to associate and say, this conversation came from this robot and then find a way to know the user of this robot is such and such person. Uh, so we are ta we take security measures very seriously and knock on wood so far, we have not had any incidents with the uh, breach of security. Could you tell us about the team that worked on developing Moxie? What specialties did you need? Uh, many specialties. So uh, of course, for AI and robotics, you need a lot of software from AI, uh, na natural language processing is a big part of this, uh, ability to have conversations. Uh, then we have uh, hardware engineering, so electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, manufacturing specialists that know how to manufacture this in large scale. And then we have child development experts and then finally, we have designers that come from companies such as Disney and Pixar that have to do with the character design and the content design. The content is the activities that Moxie will use to engage the child and teach them about many different things. Uh, so it's a very multidisciplinary team. What's your personal vision for the future of AI and its role in supporting children development? Well, I think there is a huge opportunity and potential with the kind of technologies that we have developed to help people become their best ultimate version of themselves. Um, just think about uh, 
mental health for a second. Unfortunately, we live in a world where there's a lot of pain inflicted because of conflict uh, around the world, right? We have seen in Ukraine, now we are seeing in Israel and Gaza. And this is unfortunately the history repeating itself. Unfortunately, we Armenians, we experienced this more than a century ago. And you can still feel the remnants of this happening. We saw what happened with Artsakh just a few months ago. Uh, as a result of this, there's children get displaced from their home, home uh, which is an extremely traumatic experience, right? Even in countries like US, which may not have experienced exactly that, there are other factors. As an example, 50% of US marriages end up in divorce, which is a very traumatic experience for children as well. And this, this kind of experiences scar children for life. And typically you would need therapy to help these children. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have enough human labor trained to be able to deal with this kind of situation. So in the U.S. alone, just to use statistics I'm familiar with, there, for every one therapist, there's 350 children that you need to serve. So there is a huge gap of labor to pro provide help to these uh, kids. And then you go into education, you have similar characteristics where you have a teacher in a classroom with 30, 40 children. There is no way that teacher has the bandwidth to be able to pay attention to every individual child. So there, as a result, there are children that are not strong enough, they fall behind in the classroom. And if you fall behind in the classroom, then it's hard to get back again, uh, unless you have some one paying attention. So with AI companions and generative AI in general, we have the potential to create a ultimate AI uh, care provider like Moxie that has unlimited patience. It will never get tired and say, oh, you asked that question 10 times. I'm not going to answer that again. It will always have the same level of patience as the first time you asked the question. It's going to have the ability to express empathy. Moxie AI also emulates em human emotions, understands the child's emotional state, looks at facial expressions, um, and is able to express empathy and support. And it has unlimited knowledge. Like It's like having the heart of Mother Teresa and uh, the brain of Albert Einstein on your desktop helping your child. You know, this is this is unbelievable potential that we have in, in at the fingertips. Now, that is children. Then you go to the other end of the age spectrum when we get to aging and elderly and so on, especially in civilized countries uh, or developed countries, let's say, put it. Uh, you have this elderly population get socially isolated and loneliness is a very big problem. So fortunately in the Armenian communities, we usually surround our families and the grandparents sp still have time with their grandchildren and so on. That's very, very important. That's something that's lost in a lot of the developed countries um, and the elderly are left alone and loneliness leads to a lot of mental health challenges, Alzheimer's, dementia, and then that leads to physical health challenges. So you can imagine having Moxie AI companion for the elderly population to keep them company, keep them motivated and excited uh, to want to leave another day. Otherwise it leads to health issues and then people uh, start having to end up in hospital, in and out of hospital and so on. So. Overall, I believe AI companions can help improve the quality of life. They can improve helping children overcome challenges, whether it's education-wise or mental health-wise, and become more balanced human beings, which hopefully will serve the community better, right? So the way I would like to say it, any startup company talks about changing the world, I think in our case, we actually literally have the potential to change the world one, one child at a time because we help build or uh, uh, or develop 
more robust human beings that are going to be more well balanced in terms of their emotions as well as being educated. So what you're saying is really interesting, but what about the risk? Have you experienced a situation where something just went wrong? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we have to be super careful and ethical and responsible. Like any new technology to the world, uh, we need to have regulation around it and we need to have ethics around it so that it's used in the right way, right? So uh, uh, nuclear power, as an example, has a huge potential to solve the energy problem. I know in Armenia, the, the, the bulk of the energy comes from a nuclear power plant. Um, if it's used responsibly and carefully, but at the same time, we know nuclear energy can also be used in war to kill people, which has dire consequences because it can cause mutations and cancer and many horrible, horrible diseases. Um, and this is an interesting thing. I'll bring it back to the first point. So. The question becomes, how do we control this? At the end of the day, it depends on how we humans choose to use these technologies. We can choose it for good or we can choose it for evil. Unfortunately, humans have the capacity to do both. And we constantly do it over and over and over again, right? And by the way, the, in my opinion, the only way to avoid that in the future is by creating, developing humans that are more ethical. So ironically enough, I think AI can be used to create more ethical human beings in the future so that they do not use technology in a bad way. Um, that's at least my uh, ideal idealistic world that I would like to think about. So it is like creating a new society. I think we can. I mean, if, if, we, if we give the ch every child the opportunity to be well balanced, both from an emotional perspective as well as educational perspective. Um, AI can allow us to be more productive and everyone can have much better income and the living standard can increase. And then hopefully then people are not greedy to try to wage wars and uh, access more power and more, more, more wealth, hopefully. Okay, so is there something you want to add? No, I think... We can keep talking about this, but I think we covered a lot. Yeah. Thank you very much for the interview. It was really interesting. That's all for today. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and share our videos. Bye, Moxie. See you soon.